Okay, welcome once again. This topic is the fuel injectors. Obviously, you're, you're familiar with the fuel injector system. There are quite a few of them. You can think of a fuel injector as a valve where you're spraying a fuel into each cylinder. Now, the tricky part is, as you can see over here, we have six fuel injectors. Obviously, you can figure out it's a V6. It's a six-cylinder. Now, how do you? There's, the tricky part is how do you toggle this valve or the fuel injector on and off? Well, obviously, here comes into the picture the, the PCM, the control module. It decides when to open and close depending on the air-fuel ratio. If you need more fuel, this is the toggle over here. It'll close it this way. The computer will close. It's not a physical, physical ground. The ground is given by the PCM. He'll decide which one to close. So in other words, let's say I need to close one and three and two. He will toggle this one. He will toggle this one to spray more fuel into the appropriate cylinder of number two, appropriate cylinder of number three, appropriate cylinder of number one. Sequential. Sequential means one after the other. That's why it's called sequential, central sequential fuel injection system, <clears throat> one after the other. Now, so the computer gives a ground for each one. Think of it as a valve. Let's say the faucet, you need more water, you'll open the faucet longer. <clears throat> if you want less, if you want less water, you close the faucet or you lessen you close it a little a little each time. <clears throat> Same idea over here. So the computer, excuse me, <clears throat> the computer might keep this closed, let's say, for about two milliseconds, four milliseconds. Remember in the beginning, if you have a cold start, the computer will keep this closed longer. Why? Because everything is colder. The engine is cold, everything is colder. Therefore, we need to spray more fuel into each cylinder. <clears throat> so it will give more fuel okay so now that you understand that concept we need a power we need a 12 volts for each one here's the 12 volts through this fuse ecm fuse going through here going through here going through here. each one each branch will develop and get 12 volts and current going through it as you can see each branch for each fuel injector as long as the computer closes it he says, you know what? I have a current. I have a complete path, path to ground. I will use this branch to for current to flow. Great. Here comes the problem. Let's say you have a crank and no start. Okay? Now, let's say you put the you put your scanner on. Let's say you get all these codes, and let's say you get fuel injector number one, number two, number three, number four, and it's listed one after the other. What's the first thing that should come into your head or pop into your head? The first thing that should come into your head is I lost power through all of them. It cannot be that all six of them <clears throat> are defective. It's impossible, right? What's the main? You have to think of the common cause. How did I lose six injectors? Either power through the fuse or the ground, if you all share the ground. This is not a physical ground. So what's the second thing that should come into your mind from this diagram? The computer might be faulty. Maybe this computer lost 12 volts for this circuit. Now remember, the computer might have multiple, multiple points of 12 volts. He's not going to just have one terminal 12 volts. He's going to have three pins, four pins possibly, whatever, for 12 volts feeding each different circuit in this, internally in this computer. So for example, again, scanner tool says fuel injector, all of them invalid, all of them not working. I go to the fuse. The first thing is, I okay, I went to the fuse and I saw, okay, I have 12 volts here, okay? And I have 12 volts over here, fine. We know the fuse is good. What's the next approach? <clears throat> What will knock out all of these? We said the PCM, fine. Which branch, and now we're coming down to the tricky part, which branch in this one will knock out all of these before? Now let's look at it again. <clears throat> if this branch is broken over here, we'll mark an X for a broken branch or a wire. <clears throat> Can these work? Yes. Current has a branch to flow for the other one. So all five will work, but this one will not. 
that's not our problem. Our problem is all six of them are not working. Okay? Our problem is all six of them are not working. Can it be that, let's say, this one is broken and this one is broken? No, that's not our problem. Because if this wire would be broken, this pink one here and this pink one over here, these two would not work, but this wouldn't work, this one, this, and the other four would work. That can't be that one. Now let's get more technical. Let's go into the branch. This one broke. Okay? If this one broke, <clears throat> will that knock out all six of them? No. Because you still have current path for these two, and you still have current path for these two, but these two will not get any current, so therefore, they're not connected to 12 volts, therefore, these two will not work. Again, that's not our problem. Let's go to more technical. How about if this one is broken over here? Will that knock out the other ones? All six of them? No. Again, no. Why? These two will not work. The, the current that flows here has to flow here also. Fine. So if current cannot flow through this one, that means obviously it cannot flow through this one. So it'll knock out what? It'll knock out four. It'll knock out uh, six and five and three. What about these two? These two will work. What's the conclusion? If I have a broken wire right here before it gets to the split... Okay, before it gets to the split, that will knock out all six of them. So you're dealing with either the fuse which we tested was good or the broken wire over here. Not here, not here, not here, not here. Okay, that's the difference. That's why you have to get the diagram, look at the diagram, analyze it. And this is how technical electronics is. And this is how, how difficult electronics is again it could be of course it can be the pcm how would we know the pcm even controls this if we don't have the diagram how do we even know which which fuse to to look for if we don't have the diagram will the ecm fuse in your mind say that's for the fuel injectors when i see ecm fuse i'm thinking that gives voltage to the computer not to the fuel injectors but how would you know that unless you get the diagram Look at it and say, oh, okay, so ECM-1 has to do with the fuel injectors. Now I see. So if all six fuel injectors are conducting, I should not get more than, what, 15 amps. So if I put a clamp meter over here or I put a, an inserter, a, a current inserter, I should not get more than 15 amps over here. <clears throat> and that's how you know how many would be working. So this is just a quick way how to troubleshoot. Again, you have to look at the wiring sometimes also. If I have this broken wire over here, the pink with the black stripe is broken. Everything else is intact. Will that knock out all six of them? Absolutely not. It will only knock out this one, the branch that contains a fuel injector three. So difficult it is. Yeah, it is difficult but, uh, um, evaluating and, and analyzing schematics. But this is why... This is why you have to learn electronics from the foundation from, from the foundation of it, and then apply it to automotive. But go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, and the other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics by, by Joseph, where you'll see videos with scopes and um, also um, how to test batteries and battery tests and things like that. Hopefully, I'll be making more hands-on once the weather gets a little better. I've been too busy with other things, but anyway, thank you for the subscribers. Thanks for watching.